Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by Greg's Beer Reviews. Look at here. Three big bottles of St. Arnold Brewing's Pumpkinator. Uh, guys, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, this is probably going to be a long video. I've never done three at the same time. <clears throat> this one here is the uh, 2016 edition of the St. Arnold's Pumpkinator. This was sent to me by Brandon. The next one here in the center is the 2015 edition. It was sent to me by Brandon. And he's down in Texas where this stuff is made. And the 2013 edition I have here was sent to me by Rico. So uh, we've got three different years here. 13, well, I don't have the 14. Uh, but we're going to do the 13 since it's been aged the longest. And we got a 15 and a 16 just to see how much has changed between the last year's and this year's edition. So, <laughs> bear with me. Uh, I'm not going to drink all, all of all three of these. I'm going to pour the other half uh, uh, a glass out of each one of them too. So, uh, but we're going to see how much it's changed uh, uh, from, between, from 13 to 15. Uh, so, and then that. Uh, in a nutshell, guys, I'm, I, I've told you this before, this is wrapping up the Pumpkin Beer Week, and it's a good way to wrap it up by doing these three at the same time. Uh, I'm not a super big fan of pumpkin beers. Some of them are rather tasty, some of them are not so much, kind of thin and watery. Uh, but all of them have the same characteristics, guys. Uh, nutmeg, cin ginger, cinnamon, allspice, uh, some cloves, uh, uh, they'll hit. They'll, they'll throw some vanilla in there if they want to say marshmallowy. So uh, let's see where this one goes. Uh, I want to try to speed this up as much as I can, especially since I'm doing three, and it's probably going to be a long video. Uh, the, these beers vary uh, in ABV, and I don't know if it's written on each one what this one is. All right. This is the 2016, and it says it's 11%. Whopping big beer. Imperial. The next one here is the 2015. And I'm not seeing it written on here anywhere, guys, of what it is. So, uh, I'm not exactly sure what the ABV is. Uh, so they have wised up a little bit and started putting the ABV on there. It just says ale brewed with pumpkin and spices, imperial pumpkin. So I'm not sure what the ABV is on the 2015 one here. And I would think the 2013 is probably not going to have it on there either. It does not. So, uh, and according to what I have here on Rape Beer, uh, it doesn't say what year they're reviewing here. It says 10%. And uh, over to Beer Advocate, they also have it at 10%. And I've seen somewhere that it was a 7.9%. So I'm not exactly sure on the two older ones here, guys, what the ABV is. The 2016's got it on there. So uh, hopefully they'll continue to do that. Uh, evidently they're doing this every year. Uh, so let's see where this one goes. Uh, I'm going to tell you right off the bat. It is a uh, pumpkin ale uh, or a herb, spice, vegetable type beer. Uh, not a lot of food pairings. General dessert, meat, poultry. Glass of pint, pint back and a tumbler. And I'm using three pint glasses so they're all the same style. This one's a little taller than the other two, but that's as close as I can get to having all three of them the same. Uh, IBUs on this beer. Uh, untapped for the 11%, which is the newest one, the 2016. It says it's 34. I'm not sure what it is on the, uh, the 15 and the 13. So, uh, uh, not recommended for extended cell unless ABV extends average range. Well, at 10%, you know, it does extend average range, and 11% does for sure. So, let's get on with it and see what we got. I'm going to start off, and once I pour these guys, I'm going to set the bottles down and try to keep the glasses to where I know. 
I'm going to put the 2016 in the tall one and the 15 and 13 in the shorter ones. So let's, uh, let's get the 16 into a glass and see what we got here. Uh, this is a little out of the normal. I've never done three at the same time before. Whoa, big time hiss on this one. Big time hiss. And I said we were going to put that one in the big glass. So let's put the 16 in the big glass. Let's get a little creamy head on this if we can. And like I said, I'm going to save her a glass for each one of these. So, there's the first one, there's the 16. And I might even put a piece of tape on them so I don't get them mixed up. Uh, so there's the 16. We're going to set this down. Alright, the 2015 is the next one. So let's see what this brings. Nice hit, but not quite as big as the 16. This one is the 15, and guys, I am going to put it. A little piece of tape so I don't get the 13 and the 15 mixed up. We'll do 15 on this one. And that's the only one I need to put the tape on because I know the other, what the other two are. And let's set this out of the way. And finally, we'll get to 13. I do want to thank Brandon for sending, that didn't have hardly any hits at all to it guys. So the older it is, the less hits it's got. Let's go down the center on this one. So there you have it. There's all three of them in the glasses here. Got about the same amount, pretty close to the same amount on each one. 16, 15, 13. So, a little creamier head on the pores uh, uh, on the two outside ones than we did the 15. Basically, the head has dissipated completely already. So, let's start with the oldest one first. They're all pretty dark, guys. They are uh, very, very dark beers. They get a little bit of red ribbiness around here, but these glasses doesn't lend to that since they're pretty thick all the way down. Definitely tell us an Imperial. I've got a little bit of alcohol in the nose, some nutmeg, ginger, cinnamon, but it does have a little bit of booziness to it. The 15, well, pretty close to the same aroma. Definitely getting a little bit of the alcohol, but it's got the same ginger, cinnamon, and uh, nutmeg in it. Smells very, very similar to the 13. And here's the 16, one that had the big hiss. This one... I'm not, I'm not getting quite as much booziness and there's a little stronger cinnamon and nutmeg to the new one. And actually it smells a little sweeter. So, uh, and it's still got a nice creaminess where the head has, uh, as far as the head, it's down to about an eighth of an inch where these have dissipated completely. So let's start off with the 13. That's a strong beer, guys. The alcohol is not very well hidden.
and to me there is some uh, hints of pumpkin and cinnamon and stuff but the flavors are kind of subdued the booziness is not but the flavor of the nutmeg and the cinnamon and the ginger seems kind of subdued so let's jump over to the 15 Very similar, guys. To me, the 15, maybe because I've already tasted the, the booziness of the 13, the 15 doesn't seem quite as boozy in the taste, but the nutmeg and the ginger and the cinnamon is, is about the same as the 13. It's kind of subdued. But it doesn't seem to be quite as boozy. And that may be because I've already tasted the 13 and got that big boozy notes already. A lot of times when you first taste it, you'll get that big booziness and as you sip on it, the booziness kind of dissipates or you get accustomed to it. It's not really dissipating, it's still there, but you've already tasted it and your palate has become accustomed to it. So let's jump over to the uh, 16 here. It's still got a nice creamy head on it. So, that is a little creamier. And the cinnamon and the nutmeg seem to be just a tad stronger on this pressure. So evidently, the spices are fading as, it, as it's celery. To me guys, initial impressions, the 2016 is creamier, a little stronger spices. The 15 is kind of subdued on the spices and the alcohol seems to be a little subdued. So let me hit this one one more time. This one is definitely more boozy guys. I'm definitely getting more booze on the the 13th than I am the 15 or the 16. The spiciness uh, is about the same on both of those. But this one is definitely more boozier than the 15. Spice, about the same. This one being fresh. The nutmeg, ginger, and cinnamon is a little stronger on this. It's more prevalent, more stronger, and that one has definitely got a, a creamier mouthfeel. As you can see, there's no lacing left on these, and this is leaving a very nice lacing on the glass. And still got just a little bit of a head covering up where these have to absolutely none. So let's let them warm up. They're not super cold right now. Uh, uh, they're about 50 degrees, uh, and that's where on the bottle it says to serve them around 50 degrees. So. We're going to sip on them and let them warm up a little bit and see where they end up and pour her some and, uh, and I'm not going to, she's going to probably drink one of them at a time instead of pouring three separate glasses and uh, see where we end up with this and uh, uh, we'll come back and uh, give you the final, final verdict on them guys. Alright guys, I'm back, got just a little bit left here, got a slight buzz going on here, uh, like I said I only drank a half a glass or Recorded a glass of each one and poured her a glass, and uh, uh, she liked them. Uh, she's a bigger fan of these than I am. Uh, I'm not a big pumpkin beer fan, guys, and uh, I'll tell you straight up that I've told you that already this week. Uh, they're very, they're very much the same as uh, all pumpkin beers are. They got the nutmeg, the ginger, the cinnamon. Uh, a lot of times they'll throw some vanilla in there to get that marshmallowy uh, taste in there, but uh, they're all pretty much very similar. Uh, one is pretty close to the other one. The only exception to that is the pumpkin. 
uh, it, it is quite different than anything else that I've tasted, and I'm not a fan of that either, to be honest with you. And some people love that, think it's the best thing since sliced bread. I am not in that category, guys. I am not. Uh, uh, so uh, we're wrapping up the uh, pumpkin beer week here. Uh, like I said earlier, to me, the 13 is kind of on the boozy side. Now that it's come up to room temperature, not quite as boozy. All the spices are there. But it's still boozy. And the spices have faded. To me, this beer is not a, a great candidate to sell, guys. Those spices fade. Especially on the 13, the spices have faded. Uh, the 15, very similar to the 13. Not quite as boozy. But the spices have faded pretty much just like the 13 has. The spices are there. But they were kind of subdued. And on the 16, it was definitely more creamier. The 13 had a little bit of hiss. The 15 had a little more hiss. And the 16 had a great big hiss. Heavy carbon, heavy carbonation as far as I'm concerned. With the hiss, when I took the cap off the bottle, you could tell it was it was under more pressure than the 50, uh, 15 or the 13. To me, the 16 has more flavor. The spices are more prominent. It has a creamier mouthfeel to me. It is very tasty. Uh, in my honest opinion, guys, the 16 was the best one between the 15 and the 13. Uh, it wasn't as boozy. The spices were more prominent and more flavorful. Uh, had a creamier mouthfeel. Uh, had more carbonation when I opened the bottle. And more information on the bottle. Has the year on there and also has the ABV where the 15 and the 13 did not. So, uh, in my honest opinion, I think the 16 was the best one of the three. I don't think this beer ages very well. Uh, I'll be straight up honest with you. It's just my opinion. Uh, I thought the, the 16 was the best of the three. So uh, if you buy these beers, you probably ought to drink them fairly fresh. Because uh, I don't think the, the 15 wasn't as boozy as the 13. And the 16 wasn't boozy at all. And it was under more pressure. Bigger hiss when I opened up the bottle. And had a bigger head. Uh, creamier mouthfeel. 16... The 16 was the best, in my opinion. It's just my two cents. There may be people that disagree with that. Uh, uh, if I was to buy these, I would not sell them these beers, guys. Uh, I would drink them fairly fresh. Uh, I didn't think the alcohol was as prominent in the brand new bottle as it was on the 13. And the 15 fell somewhere in the middle there. Uh, so, just didn't sell well to me, in my opinion. So uh, I want to thank uh, Brandon for sending me the uh, the 13 and the 15, and Rico for sending me the 16 version. Uh, my two cents is the 16 is better than the 15 and the 13. It tasted better, it wasn't as boozy, and it was creamier. So it had more information on the bottle. So, but all three of them have the date, uh, the year, the vintage, on the bottles. So uh, that's where I'm going to leave it. Uh, Guys, I'm going to do a three different grade. In my opinion, the 13 uh, was a B beer. Uh, numeric rating on the 13 would be an 85. Uh, numeric rating on the 15 would probably be an 89, uh, B, B, a B plus. Uh, not quite as boozy, uh, but just the spices had faded. And on the 16, 
heavier carbonation, better mouthfeel, not as boozy. The spices were there and more prominent. Uh, guys, uh, I would give the 16 an A minus, probably a 91 or a 92. So 85, uh, 89, and a 92. That's where I'm putting these three beers. First time I've done a trivecta. I'm kind of bloated, got a buzz. Uh, don't know if I'll do another trivecta. Uh, it's just too much beer to drink at one setting. And trying to differentiate between all three of them. Verticals are not as bad. Uh, two beers. But trying to do three of them at one time. Uh, especially this magnitude of a, of a beer. Like I, said, I know that this is 11%. And I'm pretty sure the 15 was a 10%. Not sure whether the 13 was a 10 or 7.5%. Uh, a lot of times these recipes change from year to year, and that's why I like to see uh, that information on the bottle. Uh, is it a 7.5, is it a 10, or is it 11? Uh, put that on the information on there, because you got the year on there already, so you can't use that label over again. So give us as much information uh, on each bottle for each year that, that, as you can, especially if you're not using that label over again. So, just my two cents, guys. I know this is a long video, and I knew it was going to be when I'm doing three different uh, uh, big beers like this in three different years. But let me know what you think. If you've had the 13, the 15, or the 16, I did think the 16 was the best one of all three. So, and they don't differentiate uh, here on Beer Advocate. They say it's a 94 uh, for this. And it, like I said, it doesn't tell me whether it's a 16, 15, 14, 13, or which one it is. Uh, Beer Advocate says it's 97 overall, 100 in the style. Great numbers from those guys. And over to Untapped, they do differentiate. And uh, this one I'm looking at is 2016 version. And they give it a 4.18, which is in their A category. And that's where I am putting the 2016 version. So uh, I think the 20, 2016 version is very tasty. It is tasty, and uh, my honest opinion is that the 15 and the 13 does not sell her well, uh, especially the 13 was kind of boozy, where the 15 wasn't quite as boozy, and the 16 wasn't boozy at all for 11%. So, that's just me, and that's just my two cents. Uh, we did all three of them. Once again, uh, thanks to Brandon and Rico for sending these to me. Uh, we did all three of them, and that wraps up the... Uh, the pumpkin beer week. Uh, I think I saw the pumpkin beers that I have that I'm going to review. Uh, so if you've had any of these, let me know what you think, guys. And come on back tomorrow. Let's stick something out of the fridge. And it's probably just going to be one this time. So I'll see everybody then.